Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential problem. And make sure to stick until the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have 2 to the power of 20 minus 11. So, for my solution here, first start with 2 to the power of 20 minus 11. Now, I'm going to rewrite this as 2 to the power of 10 times 2 minus 11, because 20 is equal to 10 times 2. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is equal to a to the power of m to the power of n. So in this case, this is going to equal 2 to the power of 10 to the power of 2 minus 11. Now 2 to the power of 10, this is equal to 1024. So now I have 1024 to the power of 2 minus 11. And 1024, I can rewrite as 1000 plus 24 to the power of 2 minus 11. Now, if I have something in the form a plus b squared, this is simply equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So in this case, a is equal to 1,000 and b is equal to 24. So this is going to equal to 1,000 squared plus 2 times 1,000 times 24 plus 24 squared. Now 1,000 squared, this is simply equal to 1 million plus, I have 2 times 1,000, which is equal to 2,000, and 24 times 2,000, which is equal to 48,000. So I have plus 48,000 plus 24 times 24, which is equal to 576. Now, if I add all of these, well, 1 million plus 48,000 is simply going to equal 1,048,000 plus 576. And 1,048,000 plus 576, this is simply equal to 1,048,576. So 1 this is our answer. However, Remember, we have this minus 11. So now I have 1,048,576 minus 11, which is equal to 1,048,565. Sorry, 1,048,565. So this is my actual answer. All right, so I have 3 plus 3 is equal to 5. So we want to prove the statement to be 2. So first off, let's say we have 0 equals 0. I'm going to start with this. We have 0 equals 0. Now for my left-hand side, 0, this is the same thing as 9 minus 9, right? Because 9 minus 9, anything minus itself is 0. And for my right-hand side, I'm going to rewrite 0 as 15 minus 15, which is also equal to 0. So I'm not going beyond the rules of mathematics here. This is just simple. This is just going by the rules. So now, 9, this is equal to 3 squared. So if I replace 3 squared with 9, I have 3 squared minus 3 squared. And now 15, this is equal to 5 times 3. So now I have 3 squared minus 3 squared is equal to 5 times 3 minus 5 times 3. And again, this is also going by the rules of mathematics. Now, an important property of algebra is that if I have something in the form a squared minus b squared, this is equal to a plus b times a minus b. And this is a very common property. 
So as you can see, in this case, for 3 squared minus 3 squared, a is equal to 3, and so is b. So now I have 3 plus 3 times 3 minus 3 is equal to 5 times 3 minus 5 times 3. Now, for my right-hand side here, I'm going to go ahead and factor out 5. So if I factor out 5, I get 5 times 3 minus 3. All I did was I divided 5 times 3, 5 times 3 divided by 5 is 3, and negative 5 times 3 divided by 5 is negative 3. So that's how I got 5 times 3 minus 3. Now, if I divide both sides by 3 minus 3, these two cancel out, and these two cancel out. So now I'll be left with 3 plus 3 is equal to 5. And as you can see, we just proved this to be right. 3 plus 3 equals 5, 3 plus 3 equals 5. So if you're wondering how this is actually wrong, well, it's because this step over here. I divided both sides by 3 minus 3. Well, what is 3 minus 3? 3 minus 3 is simply equal to 0. And if I come over here, I have 3 plus 3 times 3 minus 3, this is 0, is equal to 5 times 3 minus 3 is 0 as well. So now, if I divide both sides by 0, well, 0 divided by 0, that's not equal to 1. That's undefined. So you can't actually cancel these two out because these two are undefined. Dividing these two are undefined. So that's where this equation is actually wrong. And 3 plus 3 does not equal 5. All right, so I'm going to prove that negative 1 is equal to 1. So let's first start off with negative 1 is equal to negative 1. This is a true statement because any number is equal to itself, right? So now, negative 1, this is the same thing as negative 1 to the power of 1. Any number to the power of 1 is also equal to itself. So negative 1 to the power of 1, that's also equal to negative 1. And 1, this is the same thing as 2 over 2. So if I replace 1 with 2 over 2, I get negative 1 to the power of 2 over 2 is equal to negative 1. And 2 over 2, again, it's 1, so it's the same thing as negative 1 to the power of 1. Now, 2 over 2, this is the same thing as 2 times 1 half. So now, if I replace 2 over 2 with 2 times 1 half, I get negative 1 to the power of 2 times 1 half is equal to negative 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m times n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m to the power of n. So in this case, m is equal to 2 and n is equal to 1 half. So now I have negative 1 to the power of 2 to the power of 1 half. This is equal to negative 1. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of 1 half, this is the same thing as the square root of a. So this is the same thing as well, first off, negative 1 squared, that's simply equal to 1, right? So now I have the square root of 1 is equal to negative 1. And the square root of 1, that's simply equal to 1. So now I have 1 is equal to negative 1. So I just proved to you guys that 1 is equal to negative 1. 